Wow, I just saw one of the best movies of the year, and it's called Suspiria. At the beginning, she gave me things. Perfect balance, perfect sleep. Oh, she wants to get inside of me. I can feel her. So this movie is from the director of Call Me By Your Name, the popular movie from last year, Luca Guadagnino, something that I'm not going to try and pronounce. And he, today I went and saw his new movie, Suspiria, which is a remake of the 1978 movie Suspiria. And I think this is one of the best movies of the year. After watching it and dwelling on it for a while. Um, yeah, I think this is up there in my top five, maybe even top three of 2018. This is one of the most challenging and exhausting movies I've seen this year. And while I can't say that I fully understand it, I can say that I thought it was brilliant. So this isn't really your typical horror movie. Um, based on the trailers, I really expected this to be uh, out there and gross and kind of body horror-esque But it's really not this is not really a horror movie even though it has horrific elements It's not really a drama even though it has some really potent dramatic elements It seems to be a collage of a lot of different genres mixed into one movie plus the actual structure of the movie is Incredibly unconventional and that's one of two words. I would use to describe this movie if I was only given to to describe it Unconventional and old-fashioned oddly enough, which are not words that I would use as a derogatory towards this movie I really feel like the way it's presented and the way it's structured harkens back to a lot of movies in the 70s You have six acts six acts in this movie plus an epilogue so you get act one two three four five six till the end and the movie is two and a half hours long. It is a long, long movie. And I really never felt the runtime, oddly enough. I think this movie is perfectly paced from start to finish, and each act gets more interesting and more interesting and more interesting until the climax and the epilogue happens. And I really loved Luca Guadagnino. Luca Guadagnino. Whatever. I love how he structured and paced out all of these acts. They all feel like, again, they compound on top of each other and everything sort of escalates until the ending when it really goes off the deep end. The mystery of this movie seems to stare you in the face from act one. I had no clue about this movie going in. I, I knew that it was from the director of Connie by Her Name. I knew it was a remake and I knew who the stars were. Dakota Johnson, Mia Goth, Tilda Swinton, and so on. I knew the stars, I knew that it was a remake, and I knew it was from a good director. So I went in with moderate expectations, but I've never seen the original, and I had no idea the story of this movie. So when I found out in the first act of this movie that it's about a witch's coven, I was very surprised. And going to the end of the movie, I had no clue where it was going. And I think that's one element that really works in favor of this movie is tension built through unpredictability and through mystery. You, ha I had no clue where this movie was going until it was already there. I had no clue what was going to happen next, and I found that very riveting. The end of the movie is sort of this big coven ritual that happens, and up until that point, even though the movie sort of tells you that that is going to be how it climaxes, I had no clue how it was going to get there, and I had no clue what the ritual was, was going to be. And I really love that. It's sort of what Alfred Hitchcock would always say is his style of filmmaking, where... Talking about baseball, whatever you like. Five minutes of it, very dull. Suddenly, a bomb goes off. Blows the people to smithereens. What do the audience have? Ten seconds of shock. Now take the same scene and tell the audience there is a bomb under that table and will go off in five minutes. Well, the whole emotion of the audience is totally different because you've given them that information. And through that, 
we get some great tension in this movie. And when the tension is paid off, it's paid off in some really horrifying and genuinely disturbing ways. There's a scene when Dakota Johnson is dancing on the floor and this girl is kind of getting, for lack of a better word, folded, folded up. And it's one of the most disturbing body horror I've seen in a movie in a long time. It's genuinely horrifying. And the way that the music builds to in the scene and the way that the edits are so frantic really makes this scene incredibly effective. And I think those three things are what really sell this movie. The editing, the music, oddly enough, even though I feel like it was kind of a mixed bag, but I can talk about that in a minute, and the performances. I think the performances from Dakota Johnson, from Tilda Swinton, from Mia Goth are all exceptional. They do really incredible things in this movie. A lot that I don't really want to spoil because again, I went into this sort of blind, so I'd recommend that as the way to do it. But the music is done by Tom York. And I say it's a mixed bag, even though I think when it works, it really, really works. When the music hits like it is supposed to, this movie can go from a one to a 100 in seconds, and it can really amplify the emotion of a scene in a really effective way. But when the music is not quite there with the scene, it, it really does feel like it gets washed out a lot of times. The music isn't that prominent in this movie, save for a few times here and there. And a lot of times I did find it kind of getting washed out a little bit and not in the best way, but overall I did enjoy the music and the editing and the direction. When you dance the dance of another, you make yourself in the image of its creator. Um, the movie is gorgeous. This is the, probably the best looking movie of the year, save for like Phantom Thread, which came out in January. Um, there's tons of these wide angles, tracking shots, uh, crane shots, I just forgot that, that word for a minute, and lots of super tight close-ups, snap zooms, um, slow motion, herky-jerky slow motion, like 70s slow motion. You find so many different interesting ways of suiting each scene, even though there's a lot of scenes of just dancing, somehow every single scene of dancing, he shoots in a re refreshing and interesting way, and it never gets stale. The whole movie, I was completely mesmerized by the mystery of everything and by how complex and interesting the direction and cinematography was in this movie. For a horror movie to look this good, I was kind of blown away. And I think the editing will be really underappreciated in this movie. A save for a couple of kind of awkward cuts here and there, I think the way that it intersplices between some horrifying scenes and just dancing is amazing. It really amplifies the emotion of the horror, oddly enough. And the way it cuts between the witches, the mother witches story between Dakota Johnson and between this doctor is really complex and interesting. It keeps a story that is, what some people would describe maybe a little thin, and it makes it so much more engaging and riveting than it might have been if it was just more traditionally structured. It's all a mess. The one out there. The one in here. The one that's coming. I love this movie. I think this is, again, one of the best movies of the year. It's really complex. It's incredibly mesmerizing. It's genuinely horrifying at times. I really liked all the performances. The music was really solid. And overall, I loved the unpredictability of this movie and how it constantly kept me on my toes. So I'd say definitely go see it. I had to drive like 30 plus miles to see it, but it's definitely worth it. Uh, go check it out. I give it a nine uh, right now. Uh, uh, there are some nitpicky things that I could talk about. Like there is some use of CG blood near the end that I felt kind of dampened the effect of some scenes. And again, there's a couple awkward cuts here and there. But other than that, this is probably as close to a flawless horror movie as we've gotten in a long time. So 
check it out. And that's it. Uh, I'll see you some other time I don't, for whatever happens.